Okay. Track, al- I shouldn't say track, album number five, number our five. only return, The Police, Ghost in the Machine. Matty Ice. Yep. So Ghost of the Machine comes in at number 159 in the 1980s on Best Ever Albums, number 13 in 1981, number 1041 of all time. It's the Police's fourth highest rated album on Best Ever Albums. We already covered Zenyatta Mandata a couple weeks ago. Uh, that was their fifth rated album. Um, number two was Regatta de Blanc. We're not covering, that was a 70s album, as was Outlandos d'Amour. Uh, but we will be covering Synchronicity, which is the the grand poobah of Police Records. Um is that album. next in the chronology, Matt? Yeah, uh, ab- next like, and sing- last. Yeah. Okay. That's I think it. we're They'll covering them in a. I think we're covering them in like in two weeks or something. To, uh, mm-hmm. So we're, we'd be finishing up the police pretty quickly. Uh, police is ranked number one seventy one of overall artist rankings on best ever albums as well. So, um, and so for this album, as much as um. I did see some similarities with uh, this and uh, actually the album we just covered, Men at Work, and it's got in, in terms of that reggae slash ska, the mm-hmm. upbeat, you know, kind of guitar. It's a little jammy, I would say. A little jammy, yeah. Um, I, I was a little, I'm a little down on this record, I would say. Um, I found, particularly in the first half, uh, although it end, it starts off with like the three songs that I that I really know knew. Um, you know, from the police, uh, but they, they're not my favorite. So I think right away I was like, oh, because sometimes when I, when I listen to some of these uh, albums of artists that, um, you know, that I, that I know uh, mm-hmm. maybe more from greatest hits, I'm kind of like, oh, what hits, you know, which, what, what songs made it on this record? And, you know, probably the one that I liked the most on this, which was um, Everything She Does Is Magic. Uh, Spirits in the Material World, Invisible Sun, were, I, they're, they're fine. Um, they, they're not songs that I, they're not my favorite police songs, you know? So I wasn't, I wasn't like jazzed for, you know, uh, some of the singles on here. Um, I found, but I found songs like Hungry For You, Demolition Man in particular, just very, very repetitive. And um, I, I wanted them to diversify a little bit there, especially Demolition Man. God, that's, <laughs> It's 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 six minutes again. It's another long song, and it's just it's the same thing over and over again. And I don't think it's that. I don't I don't think it's particular. It doesn't really grab me that much, you know. Um, mm-hmm. I thought the album got a little better towards the end of the second side. Um, you know, it's a little bit more. I think it could, maybe it's a little bit more synthy. Um, just a little bit more atmospheric, perhaps. Um, you know, uh, there's elements of this too much information, I think is kind of, it's kind of upbeat and catchy. Um, you know, uh, but like, I don't know, one world, not three, um, rehumanize yourself. Wasn't too huge on that. It just, there's, there's, there's a lot of meh on here. I think, I think there's some decent songs. I think they're the Omega man's kind of got a cool, cool, interesting sonic thing happening at the beginning. I don't know what they're using there. There's, there's a little mm-hmm. of experimentation. Um, that's kind of cool. Oh, I'm seeing that that is an Andy Summer song as well. That's the only Andy Summers. Most of these are staying written by staying, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, I think I like the other album that we covered a little bit uh, better. I just, I felt that there were some, actually, I thought there were some duds on here and I was a little surprised by that. Um, I did know Demolition Man from before. I think I remember that at the end of the movie, Demolition <laughs> Man, uh, for whatever reason, I was like, oh, the police have a song called Demolition Man. But I didn't know if it was just six minutes of the same, you know, kind of bass line over and over again with just some yeah. horns layered over top of it that just really didn't do too much for me. So um, I'm going to go... I'm going to go thumbs in the middle on here just because I was expecting more and just didn't really grab me as much as I was hoping that it would. So, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going to completely disagree with you. This is probably my favorite police album. Um, Wow. I think that this is the police album that most rewards continued listing. I'd say I think Spirits in the Material World is right up there with the best songs they have. It's a freaking phenomenal song musically like the bass parts thing has is one of the first bass parts i'd want to learn how to play if i was a bassist um stuart copeland's drumming is awesome Mm -hmm. on this album um i actually as the police have a lot of love songs i'm not always a huge fan of their love songs but i actually think every little thing she does is magic is a pleasant little song lyrically and that's one thing I've made fun of, you know, I love The Police, but I've made fun of Sting's lyrics in the past. This is a stronger album, lyrically, for mm-hmm. sure. Um, songs like Invisible Sun and Demolition Man, two songs I really like. Um, 
I really, really disagree with you on Demolition Man. I, I love that song. Um, I think it's one of the police's best songs. Wow. It's like, it's like a jazz song. Um, I get it because some of the jazz that I think was being interpreted, Matt, was stuff you didn't like when we did it before, and I think I was higher on. Um, but uh, lyrically, it's strong. Um, I, I, I really... I really just love that song. I, I love the fact that the police in their first three albums kind of had that reggae rock sound that is very appealing, but it kind of had gotten to the point where you'd heard what it sounds like. And this to me is the album that is the off ramp to synchronicity that while a more pop and we'll talk about it. So I don't want to go, but it's like more polished. Right. And probably it's ambitious in some ways. I love the ambition in this album and I love the fact that this album to me is the police where all three members of the band are the most present. You know what I mean? They don't blend together. No one's taken over from, I feel like they're all here for the, the album. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to explain. Like the, you, you can like listen to it for the Andy Summers parts and then the Stuart Copeland parts and then the Sting parts. And you can listen, the Sting parts are interesting because you can do the bass lines, right? But you can also do his lyrics and his singing and, and his thing. Um, I, I feel sort of the vibe of this album too. There's a, there's an ominousness to this album yeah. as well, which I, I like, I think even if I remember correctly, the cover is like, it's like Morse code or something for it's like a broken clock uh, like the it's, digital yeah, clock it's, yeah it's something that's like um it signals something i even the cover i think is really cool because it's sort of you know it kind of adds to the the ominous feel of it, it reminds yeah, me I, of the predator countdown clock on this yeah arm. <laughs> i think it's also uh, you know what it is no i remember now and i'm not even looking this up it's supposed to be the three members of the band guys. yes i'm reading that right now they're, they're yeah they're, i I'm not even looking at it. I, I'm remembering it now because I love the police and I'm looking at the cover and I'm like, the second one looks like hair. And I'm like, that's right. It's the three members of the band, isn't it? John, John, what's the order from left to right? <laughs> Ooh, uh, I feel like Sting is in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. And then I feel like Andy Summers would be on the left and Stuart yep. Copeland on the right. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I got it. Yeah, okay. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the thing in the middle is the hair, right? Yeah. I feel like that's well, what it is. About the other, I don't know what the other guys look like. So. Andy, <laughs> uh, Stuart Copeland's really tall, and Andy Summers is not, and that was one of the main things. I, okay. yeah, that was kind of how I looked at it. Yep, there you go. Good, good mm -hmm. job, John. Yeah. So I promise I didn't cheat either. But yeah, no, I and I, you know, it's funny when I did this. I figured this would be you and Josh's least favorite Police album, and. I knew where it stood for me, which is it's either my favorite or second favorite. Um, and I get it. I get it, Matt. I get why it's not there. But this this might be where a little bit of like the ominous theme and the music. Well, just part. like and even yeah. like going back to Demolition Man, it's not even like you were mentioning. Yeah, I see the jazz, the jazz element of it. It's just I was sick of that bass line. Mm -hmm. Like that was just over and over again. I was like, do something like mix it. It's not a terrible baseline. It's, it's, it's fine. But when I just wasn't, I didn't want six minutes of it. So I just was, I, I wanted them to kind of throw in different parts, but that's, you know, that's just how. Well, that, but it's the guitar is, yeah. it's the, well, the baseline is designed to have the guitar and the vocals, right? Like do the work. That's what it's there. And that's the jazz part. You know what I mean? It's, it's keeping the. Yeah. keeping the time where the, and that's why i like that song because to me that song's not about the bass line the bass line's almost like the drum line and if you notice Stuart copeland with the drums is freaking all over the place and so I the could, bass just yeah. becomes the drum beat and that's how I, so yeah i mean but that's yeah, something but i love it about just, the police, i couldn't yeah. i just couldn't get it out of my head so anyway josh okay. what do you think i am the police okay so the more i listen to the police and and just based on this album and the last album there's they're so distinct first of all i can you can tell it's a police album right away and they seem to be a band that is really good at incorporating other elements of music almost like world music to to create their own unique sound so this is so you know so apparently influenced by reggae as soon as i listen to it the there's horns all over this album and there's also some some synth on this album a lot and they've they've taken it and made it their own and i i appreciate that i 
I'm kind of in between you guys, I think, on this album. Um, I thought the first half was really strong, and the second half I, I kind of wore me out. There's something about the energy on this album that kind of wears me down. It seems like there's a lot going on all of the time, and it it, it, it I can't uh, always like concentrate or enjoy it. There's there's no like there's no space on the album if that makes sense it's like always like going and like there's like let's throw horns let's throw this constant tapping with the drum let's do like you know sting doing his his uh his kind of belting singing voice and that kind of rubbed on me uh the wrong way after a while and i don't know it's it's weird to say that about an album because aren't all albums always going i mean that's the nature of music but there, there's some propulsive aspect to this that that um got me kind of discombobulated or something and there is there a is a chaos to the album josh i would agree with you on that yeah yeah may maybe that's it there is some sort of chaotic like um nature to it. it 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 also i feel like is kind of jamming like matt said there's a lot of repetition um on a song like one world uh I found or rehumanize yourself, you know, Sting repeats the the chorus and the lyrics over and over again. Um, even uh, also on too much information. That's that's another one, you know, too much information driving me insane, uh, you know, something to that effect. He says that over and over again. And uh, so that that's a it's almost like Sting is like trying to get you in some sort of like tantric mindset before he even like talked about that they're they're trying to bring you to some sort of like euphoric uh i don't know uh place by by you know listening to the music i i can imagine people super being into this band at a concert and like those like um those women that are like just dancing like crazy like whirling dervishes to the music or something when when they're playing that's kind of the energy and vibe i get just people mm -hmm. having some sort of like spiritual experience listening to this album um now the I, story of demolition man's interesting guys i know it from the it's like it was originally given to grace jones the okay. singer and mm -hmm. like she did like a version of it and like they hated it <laughs> so they basically did the version mm -hmm. as they imagined it for this album yeah mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. I can't, while I can't get on that wavelength of that, I imagine this album, uh, being, I, I appreciated it. I will be interested to see, uh, I haven't, I don't know. I'm not like too high on the, the first police album we listened to or this one. So I'll be interested to see what, if the, the last one we talk about does anything different for me. They are just so, um, kind of singular and unique that I can't quite get on their wavelength but I, I appreciate what they're doing yeah and I think I, I yeah I think as I'm looking more at these the tracks here and thinking about my reactions to them I think I, I, I definitely like the second half as a whole better than the first half and I think it's kind of split like I think I like half of the songs on here and not so much the other half it's just that the the half that I don't like stands out more to me than the half that I do like um, I would say uh, but I I do think the last three songs I like the way it ends with the last three songs there Omega Man Secret Journey and Darkness I found those a little bit more interesting and um but yeah, so maybe that's just why. Yeah, I think thumbs in the middle is just a good good way for me to put this. It's just, and 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 maybe even, I was even thinking more trending downwards just because, like, again, I was expecting, I was excited, I was like, oh man, this is going to be an interesting. And I knew that this was kind of like between the last album and then Synchronicity. So I think I was going in with a little bit higher expectations, and then I was, I I just felt with some of these songs they were letdowns. But I do agree with you, Josh. They are a singular kind of band and it's they they have their own style going on and they are expanding so i appreciate that going back to what we were talking mm -hmm. about before trying different things and you know like that and john you're right too like the the musicianship it's if there's no slight against that you know these guys definitely can play their instruments and they're talented it's just i was i was left a little flat more than i was expecting to be um it, so we also should mention that this album is much more synthetic like i know that yeah. Sir Copeland ran his drums through a drum machine, even though mm -hmm. like the design was to not make it sound like that. It was produced by the same guy who did the Phil Collins albums with the drum sound. Um, it never sounds, <laughs> yeah. and I hate that sound, but like yeah. somehow it doesn't 
sound like that, which is part of why Stuart Copeland's an incredible drummer, because he somehow manages to do that, but not make it sound as artificial. Um, I know that the other two band members felt to some degree this was like a Sting solo album with them behind it, but it never felt like they were very much present on this and not as like studio musicians to me. And I know Sting's future work and I'm not a huge fan of it and I much prefer how it sounds here. Um, and yet th this to me is more jazz inspired with some of the same reggae flourishes, but they're, they're moving away. We didn't cover the first two albums, guys, but they sound very similar uh, mm -hmm. to the third album that we did cover. And so when you have that context, right, you kind of know what we talked about earlier. They, they were ready for a new direction. And, uh, and when we get to what synchronicity sounds like, it'll be interesting to see how, you know, this contextualizes it because you'll have all three pieces of the puzzle. But yeah, I, I really like this one. I also think this is like one of those albums that from the beginning I always liked, but you'd hear like, oh, this is the police's, you know, quote unquote, bad album. And like many things, right? It's kind of, it's starting to gain esteem as people listen to it and like sort of the dystopian themes a little bit more. So yep. I, I will add that I hadn't heard that song Invisible Sun before, and that was by far my favorite song on the album. Oh, really? I really like kind of the slow, dark synth on it mm -hmm. there's something about it that i that i really appreciated yeah it's like, like ominous without being scary yeah you know yeah. it's hard, hard that's to another describe. one of the songs where i like the verses better than the chorus i like mm -hmm. i think the verses are good and then like I, I don't know the chorus to me is kind of a little bit of a letdown but um which is why i'm not as high as that i know that because it was on that that was on the uh the the, the singles or i don't know if single yeah because like, it was a single i think so yeah, it was on I that compilation album that i had it's so i did know that it's yeah. um it's uh, about Northern Ireland, lyrically. So, mm -hmm. interesting listen. Yep. So Well, that makes okay. sense. Start with the darkness, then. Yeah. Probably I think he, he, he wrote it. Yeah, I, I, I would have to look up the story, but I, I remember it.